laceration from a previous video that we made in the pig's foot, and we've selected the suture we want to use. So we'll open our suture material up, and we'll find that they usually come on, these plastic mantles. And the way that you can get this out of the package very nicely is to take your needle drivers and clamp the end of the needle and then roll it out. After removing the needle, carefully pull the suture material out of the package. Make sure that it doesn't land on anything that's not sterile or at least not clean. Returning to our pig's foot, we're now going to place simple interrupted sutures using a curved needle, pickups with teeth, and a needle driver. We'll begin by assessing how long the wound is and then determining where its halfway point is. The rule of halves is a surgical principle that states that you take any laceration, find the midpoint, and put your first suture there. As you do that, you're bisecting the wound. This will help you tell how many sutures you'll need in order to close the entire laceration. Again, we're using pickups with teeth here because otherwise we'd have to squeeze so hard on this that it would destroy the tissue in these jaws. And destroyed tissue or dead tissue is a perfect setup for a place where bacteria can replicate and grow, causing wound infection. We're going to pull our suture material nearly all the way through. You don't always need to use a two-handed tie. In fact, you don't need to spend the time learning how to do it if you have needle drivers in your instrument kit. Take your needle drivers and the thread, and you wrap the thread around twice over the jaws of the needle holder, and then grasp the end, the free end of the suture, and bring it through. Because we wrap the suture around twice, we've made the equivalent of a surgeon's knot. Now, for our follow-up knot, we won't wrap it around in the same direction, but the opposite direction, and this will help ensure that when we grasp the end of the suture material and pull it through, that our knot will lay down into a flat square knot. Here we're going to wrap the suture material around once, twice, to simulate something very close to a surgeon's knot, and then pull the material through. Now for our next throw, instead of doing the same thing, we're going to do the opposite direction. This will help ensure that the knot that we're making will be square and will lay down tightly. This is very important. Sometimes people get very nervous when they're doing sutures for the first time, and it's impossible to remember if you put a square knot down or not. The best thing that you can do in an instant like that, if that instance comes up, is to just keep throwing knots in order to increase your knot security. So instead of four knots, perhaps we'll have six. If you just can't remember which way did I go that time or the time before, so on and so forth, just keep throwing knots. Six, seven knots may be necessary, but in the end you'll feel comfortable that even though it may slip a little bit, it won't come undone. Now we've placed our first interrupted suture using the rule of halves. Because this is a braided material, I'm going to leave only about a quarter inch of tail length on this. Using the rule of halves, we've now divided the wound into two separate places, two separate lengths. And each of those will now fall prey to the same rule. So this is the beginning of this half and the end of the half there. We'll find the middle part portion, turn the needle upside down, enter perpendicularly, and roll the needle. You don't always have to bring the needle out in the middle of the wound and re-grasp it again. You can use your forceps to hold the tissue down, and that'll help stabilize the needle. This is important because otherwise the needle will retract inward, and you'll have to grasp the needle at the tip. If you grasp the needle at the tip, you could destroy the tip or bend the needle, in which case you won't be able to use it again. We're going to pull this through and then perform our standard instrument tie. Here I've taken a very large bite in order to illustrate a principle. 
This, as we discussed earlier, is a nylon material. And if I tie this material using a single knot instead of a surgeon's knot for my first throw, what will happen is the wound edges will not stay connected together very well. Here I've tightened it down, but then when I let up, the suture does that. An additional way to help yourself tie tight knots is once you've cinched it down, pull the knot to one side if you can. This will help lock it in place. And eventually, we'll have four throws for this knot. We'll cut the tails about a quarter inch and then move to this section of the wound, putting a simple interrupted suture in in the middle. Mm -hmm.